Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the study portion of prayer meeting. We've just had uh, about uh, 45 minutes of prayer, and now we're going to have a little thought to end tonight, end the night, and we're going to go on in Jesus' name. Welcome to Southeast Seventh day Adventist Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, what we are doing tonight, and we thank you for what we have to come. Bless these words that are written uh, for in 40 days to your harvest tonight, and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that my volume is good. And tonight, uh, that's the book there, 40 Days to Your Harvest. And we're on day 25, Building Bridges Instead of Walls, part one, Building Bridges Instead of Walls. I love this lesson. So we should have a good old time tonight. All right, so let's get it started. We have been exploring effective ways of reaching our family members because witnessing must always begin at home. That principle is also promoted in Acts 1.8. But you shall, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, home, and in all Judea, beyond home, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Self-explanatory. He was telling the disciples that when you witness, you should begin with those who are closest to you and extend out. That is not only a sound principle geographically, but also emotionally and relationally. Okay, so tonight, I just laughing as I was going through this. So I'll be looking, I'll be opening up for some hands in just a few minutes, but we got to get to that place. Step one, be nice. Shouldn't this be self-evident? You know, this is not the first time we've mentioned this, and it certainly won't be the last. In this mean world, people are attracted to nice people. Now, for me, that is obvious. However, pastoring for 20, is it three years now? Everybody don't believe this. Can you believe that? Everybody does not believe that we ought to be nice. <laughs> it doesn't cost a thing, but the simple act of being nice can do more than you imagine. If we would humble ourselves before God and be kind and courteous and tenderhearted and pitiful, there would be 100 conversions to the truth where now there is only one. Now that's a powerful quote by Sister Ellen G. White herself in Testimonies for the Church, volume nine, page 189, paragraph four, and then Jesse Wilson adds at the end, so true. Man, look, when we think about verses like more than conquerors and all of that, we all on top of that. But when we think about being tenderhearted and pitiful, well, for some of us, that doesn't sound like a good deal. What we, for some of us here is, be vulnerable because you got to be vulnerable to be tender-hearted and pitiful and sometimes people won't appreciate it but remember they haven't done it to you they've done it to christ so let's have a little conversation just for a couple of minutes and i'm gonna warn you right now if you don't stay on the subject i got my hand on the mute button <laughs> so if you come on here and say yeah i hear what y'all talking about but i want to talk about something else People are going to wonder where you went because I'm going to mute you. So I'm telling you ahead of time, let's stay on the subject. So let's talk about it for a minute. Uh, are we nice to people? Can we be nicer? Anybody want to share? Yes, we can be nice to people. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Elder Parker. I'll jump out there and get in the mud <laughs> yes <laughs> we can be nicer and we should be nicer we know each other but we still can be nicer to each other just because you know someone does not mean you should not be nice to them because they should understand me by now that's mm -hmm. not what the bible says mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You should be kind, tenderhearted, pitiful, but a lot of people don't want to be that way because they look at it as being weak. Mm-hmm. And I, I told, um, I told somebody, I told a young lady, I told, I said, you do not have to look thuggish mm-hmm. for men to appreciate you. Men appreciate a woman, mm-hmm. not hard leg, not somebody who is tough. Said, hard leg. I ain't heard that in years. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> not a hard leg, not a thug. They, they appreciate a smile. Men mm-hmm. appreciate a smile. Because, I mean, everybody, and everybody online probably know this true. Every time you see a young person now, male or female, they have that hard look on them like they don't want to be bothered. I can't smile. If I smile, it's going to crack my face. Mm. But saints should not be that way. But saints are that way. Look the exact same way. Like, don't say nothing to me. I don't want to be bothered. Get away from me. I'm here because I have to be here. And that's not being nice, not even to those you know. So if you do it to those that you know, practice is what you it, it shows what you're doing because it's a, it's a habit for you mm. wow very insightful thank you elder elder gene um yes i concur we can always we can always be nicer um one thing i've heard for a long time about southeast and that when people come to visit, um, they say that Southeast is a very kind and loving and the people there are really nice. That's a good, that's a good, um, uh, <laughs> that's a good thing to be said about your church. Amen. But even with that, I believe that we can even be nicer. Um, one statement I believe in, there's always room for improvement. So yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Very balanced answer. Sister Audrey, go right ahead. Yes, we were created in the image of the Lord. And and within us, if we let it come out, you can be nice. And it's a good feeling to have that niceness that you can show with each other. Strangers, how they light up when you just say a warm word to them or even a smile. So I feel that uh, those who aren't nice is because they're not letting the inner that we have been created for to shine out. And it's it, for me, it's a good feeling. You, you, you have less gray hair, <laughs> less <laughs> wrinkles and frowns on your face <laughs> when you're nice and pleasant. And as the addict says, you can draw more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Deacon King, man. Yes, it is wonderful to watch the effects of being nice come around and make a big change. And what I'm speaking to is that I go to this gas station over here on Union and Kinsman. And they have a low lowest price kind of in the neighborhood. And the gas station was really run down. And I was hesitant to go in sometimes. But every time I go in there, I go up to the Iranian uh, gentleman who's at the register or whomever there. And I'll give him a greeting saying, hey, uh, your place is beginning to look good. I see you some, put some uh, money and investment in on the floor and getting things looking nice outside. So I just want to let you know I really appreciate it. He said, thank you, sir. And, and, and so I went in there this evening and uh, he spoke to me. He said, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. I said, stay healthy now. Everybody in the store, enjoy your week. And I went on out. So we can see the effects of planning niceness, even mm-hmm. though it might not be of a quality that we would give approval to. Instead of talking about something, let's do something about it and show the God in us to people so that they'll say, oh, that's a nice person. I'm glad they came in. Amen. 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 Elder Hood. You have to unmute Elder Hood. She said she's coming. Hold on. Uh, 
we still we can't hear you. Wow. Okay. There you go. <laughs> huh. You okay. know what? I'm just going to approach it from a different angle here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to approach it from the text that you read. Mm -hmm. And you started out with, and ye shall receive power. Mm -hmm. after which the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you start um, saying, <laughs> then you shall be a witness in, uh, I don't want to get it out of order, but how you said you would go from your family to your, however you said it. Yeah, your and current then, surroundings, yeah. And your current surroundings. So in the context of the text, if you if it's a tie-in, I don't know. But to authentically be nice, I need the power of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Because situations and circumstances have a way of, of changing that niceness. However, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, then regardless to, like you say, the individual, then it comes from a place where uh it's no longer what I do is who I am. Mm. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's that, that uh, other text. If we would humble ourselves before God and be kind and courteous and, and it's not text it's a commentary, kind and courteous and tender hearted and pitiful, there would be 100 conversions to the truth where now there is only one. So, mm -hmm. With that being said, Pastor Hood, that's why I say from that perspective, because it's talking about, uh, well, the testimony that you just read, um, yes, yeah, speaks to drawing people to Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I do agree, we we should be nice. So I'm not oh, saying that. I was just kind of <laughs> waiting to see where you were going with it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I agree. But I just think from this here text, I mean, some people, yes, uh, we say are naturally kind people. And I believe that there are people who are naturally kind people. And yet in the context of the lesson, when it talks about drawing an individual to Christ, then I need the power of the Holy Spirit first. And out of that, my kindness flows that has the power to draw a soul to Christ and be converted. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sister Veronica, go ahead. Yes, um, Pastor. <clears throat> I'm saying, I'm just going to go from it that God is love. Mm -hmm. And because God is love, you know, it's what's in your heart. It's what's in somebody's heart, you know, to show kindness and love to others. Um, I'm just going to use today on my job, my residents say, you know, keep saying to me, why are you? So, I'm not talking about one resident, it's all of them. Why are you so nice to me? Why are you so good to me? And, mm. you know, at time, I always tell him, hey, I don't work for man. I work for God. Because of the love and the kindness of God, I have to show others, you mm. know, others. So I like what sister, um, Sisterhood and um, Sister Audrey uh, said also, you have to have, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. And some days, you know, some days you may not feel that, um, you know, when the work is so overloaded and you feel so burdened down, but you still have to remember that, listen, God is love and that's what you have to give. That's just my um, thought. All right. I'm with you there. Amen. Okay, so Sister Valerie uh, said in the chat, yes, we all can be nicer. In elementary school, this one line, this was one line on the report, care. It says you heard a sermon today uh, that said the B attitudes are stepping stones to being nice. Well, there you go. Holy Spirit working it all out today for you. Uh, Sister Lynette, come on in.
You got to unmute there, Sister Lynette. Just start talking. We'll tell you if we can hear you. Oh, you're unmuted. You just got to talk. Lynette? Okay. Well, just come back when you can. We're going to move on. I don't see any other hands. So uh, the, I chose this picture. I had a lot to choose from. I like to use pictures when we're having a discussion, and I like to use them as clues to what I'm trying to convey to you. And in this case, Dr. Wilson, uh, this young lady is in some kind of uh, uh, meeting or conference, and uh, she clearly looks different than most other people there. And that could be a very unpleasant experience, but these guys chose to engage her. And I know a lot of us have been in that situation. And what a relief it is when someone engages you and acknowledges you. It kind of gives you a little more security and confidence uh, that, uh, that you're not an outcast or an outsider. Uh, when I was in, when I first went to Canton, Ohio, there was a lot of things I was trying to do. And I was getting all kind of, having all kind of problems. And finally, one of the natives there told me, it's going to take a while because you are not from here. And every since then, that was my first church. But every since then, I've experienced that or have heard people experience it over time. When somebody is the last person to come in in a church or they come from another city or another state, people often are not nice. I don't know why, um, you know, people feel like the pews and the carpet and the doors belong to them. I thought it belonged to the Lord. But uh, so often we treat people with great suspicion. Uh, and it sometimes it takes years before people just decide to be nice. And I agree with Sister White. She says, where people are nice, we can have a hundred conversions where now we have one. Thought that was worth talking about, and I'm going to go ahead and finish it now. Some churches wring their hands, rack their brains, and spend thousands of dollars to determine why they won't grow. The answer is often staring back at them in the mirror. It's true that we all have our problems. Remember, I preached that Sabbath. David had problems, and so do you. And this can affect our attitudes. But if the atmosphere in the local church is not warm, it will be virtually impossible for it to grow. Now, let me mess with the elephant in the room. Most of us are nice, but the people who are not nice don't seem to realize they're not nice. Is that true or false? <laughs> am I wrong on that or am I on the right track? I'd say you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. <laughs> El Elder Hood, go right ahead. She raised her hand, so she's getting prefer preference. Go ahead. Never mind. Never mind. All right. I did all that for you. You told me never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sister Lynette, you're back. You, she, are you being nice, Sister? <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with it. She's fine. L L Sister Lynette, go right ahead. I see your hand raised. Just start talking. Okay, maybe she's having some technical difficult there, difficulty there. But this is our real problem in local churches, right? The very people who need to hear a lesson like this don't come and hear it, or they hear it and they don't think it's about them. How do we handle that? How do we resolve that? Okay, I guess y'all don't want to offend a not nice person that may be in the room. Elder Parker, step on out there, sir. <laughs> I'm always doing it. I guess I'm peeping. <laughs> <laughs> How can we resolve that? It is by going by what the Bible says. If someone is overtaken in a fault, 
you that are spiritual must restore us one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest ye you also be tempted. So those of us that are spiritual must ask the Holy Spirit in us to show us how to approach that person and pull them aside one-on-one -on -one and let them know this is what it is. And then if they don't hear you, the Bible says, take another. So that's what we need to do. We, those of us, when I say us, I'm talking about us on the line, we need to learn how to go to someone prayerfully, lovingly, gently, and talk to them about the situation that they are causing in the church. All right. I think that's a biblical answer. Well, I know that is a biblical answer there. And I sure appreciate that. Uh, I'm just lamenting the fact that so many of us don't want to be the quote unquote bad guy. So uh, then we must do things the right way. We must do that. Even when dealing with difficult people who are causing problems, we got to be nice to them <laughs> unless they just leave you no other options. Because sometimes people will leave you no other choice. Uh, I hate that that happens, but that is the truth. No matter how nice you are, they just won't. But that has to be the right person in the right context. So uh, it, it is a challenge. And it goes back to the point that was made earlier that the first thing that has to happen is the Holy Spirit has to get a hold of us, you know, before we can do anything else. All right, so we got some chatting going on there. Uh, oh, oh, Sister Lynette is having trouble with her phone. Maybe we can talk you through it some other time. Okay, all right, so, so let's go on. Be involved. Oh, wow, I know Sister Veronica got a lot to say about this. If we are going to impact lost people, we are going to have to meet them where they are. The people that need the saving grace of Jesus are not in the church. They are in the streets. And uh, Sister Aretha told me the other day that they had a good conversation about this on Sunday night. Uh huh. They are at the mall, at the health club, at the ball game, at the wedding. And that's where we need to be. One of the primary reasons many church members are so ineffective at witnessing is that most of their time is spent in church. Wow. Be determined to mingle with non-believers. As Ellen White said, that won't happen if you are waiting for them to come to you. Ah, Dr. Wilson, I got some issues with you on this one. For a lot of us, that is true. Most of our time is spent in church. And that's a reason why some of us are so uncomfortable witnessing. But for others of us, most of our time is spent in them streets. So we have lost our witness. That's why we don't want to go <laughs> do no witnessing. Am I right about that? I think I can see that both ways. Some of us have done too much mingling. <laughs> and so we feel uncomfortable saying to people that Jesus loves you. You talking about Jesus love you? <laughs> After what you did last night? Okay. <laughs> am I wrong about that, y'all? I'll have to say amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, Go ahead, Elder Hood. Go ahead. I, I don't agree. You don't uh, agree with me? know that most people well well let me say that I don't, i'm question. not saying most I'm let me saying, ask this question when you say out in the streets what do you mean by that i mean doing things christians shouldn't be doing oh, okay and, yeah. and as to the reason why they can't they are uncomfortable with uncomfortable with mm -hmm. okay yeah okay mm -hmm. Yes, before Sisterhood interrupted me, I'm trying to tell you sinners, come on out them streets and then you'll have a better witness. Let the Holy Ghost fall upon you and he will empower you to witness. But actually, Dr. Wilson is going to address that in just a minute. Uh, so I agree with what he's saying here. 
is that a lot of people spend so much time in church that they're uncomfortable with people they're not used to being around. But there's also another element of people who are still out there. <laughs> so they, they're having conviction issues with witnessing. You want to come back, Elderhood? Yeah. I, I, and those who you reference, I think they're, that the issue is that they're not converted themselves. Right. You know, I'm so to say that in a nice way. But that's what well, I'm yeah. So from that <laughs> perspective, yeah, they're in church, but everybody in church is not converted. Exactly. And that's the thing that we have to remember um, as to why Jesus says, let the wheat and the tear grow together. So just because mm -hmm. a person is in the pew don't mean that they're even interested. Uh, that in, is in, yeah. I'm not cutting you off. I'm just amening you. Uh, because I can tell you for a fact how many times over the years that I will preach about a particular issue and then I go online and see one of my members glorifying the same issue I just condemned. <laughs> and so I said, well, Pastor Hood, you just need to stay offline. You know, we're going to yet keep praying for him. But it's like, did you not just hear me? There have been times when when I have just finished preaching about something and then some of the members will get into it about that very thing as soon as church is over. So I agree with what you said earlier, Elderhood, right at the beginning, that the Holy Spirit got to come upon us before any of these things can happen. And, uh, and I think also, you know, in the midst of going, uh, that is a way to be converted. You know, you can't wait till you solve all your problems before you go. Uh, but you must pray for the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I don't see any other hands, so I'm moving right along. Here's this other one. I think this is the last one here. Be real. Remember I said he addresses this in a moment? You are a unique creation to God. You are the sum total of all your successes and failures. One of the best things that you can give non-believers is the real you. With all your ups and downs, people need to know that Christians are real people who have learned to navigate the challenges, challenging currents of life with the help of God. Any thoughts about what Dr. Wilson is saying here? Okay, well, I'll give mine. Uh, I am both praised and criticized for being me. So y'all got me going in circles. Y'all got me all messed up. <laughs> no, not really. But I, but I, but it is true. I get both praised and criticized for just being me. I guess people imagine what they want me to be, and they just get mad. Go ahead, Elderhood. Yeah, I think this is this is very important um, because all we have is our witness, really. And to be relatable, yeah. it is, uh, it creates a sense of, of safety, you know, for, for them to be who they are and not worry about, you know, being judged because, um, you know, as a Christian, we're already thought of as having this false sense of better. Well, I shouldn't say false, but have mm -hmm. this sense of we're better than, or as if we've never had challenges or sand or you know forgetting about those things so holier I, than thou holier yeah than that's thou. the word yeah mm -hmm. that that holier than thou and and I like the word that he that he uses here that's highlighted people need to know not they should know or it will be good for them to know but they need to know that Christians are real people and that's why I appreciate um can I say being me yeah. in that I don't have to, and, and it's, it's pressure really as the Christian, that's pressure that I take off of myself um, because I don't have to work, play a role. <laughs> you know, I don't have, yeah, I don't have to play a role. I don't have to work at something that, um, you know, I shouldn't have to work at. So being authentically who I am, you know, flaws and all, uh, that really can be attractive to someone who's seeking to perhaps get to where we are. So I agree with the with the author. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you. Elder Parker, go right ahead. I totally agree with everything that Elder Hood said. And I would like to add to that, that we as Christians, we have to be real. And being real is all of us have weaknesses. All of us mm -hmm. have faults. None of us are perfect. And that's what we need to let people know. I'll give you an example on my job. Before I quit, they had a new produce manager come in. And he was nothing but a headache <laughs> Not for me, but for everybody. And people would ask me, man, how can you put up with him? And you know what I told him? It's not me. You better believe it. If the mm. old art would show up, y'all wouldn't like it. <laughs> yeah, but it's God that is keeping my mouth shut and keeping me going. Yeah. I said, there must be a reason why this is happening, why it's happening now. And know what the reason was? God sent him there to get me out of there to do what I have to do in the church because I would, I would not be online tonight if I was still working. I wouldn't be online Tuesday nights if I was working. So you see, that was God getting me out of there at the time that he wanted me to. But that thorn in the flesh was for that reason. But it also was a witness to all of those that I was working with because none of them talked to that man in any kind of way nice, but I did. And they saw that. So they're showing, you know, you can show your weakness, you know, because a man, how can you do that? I said, the Bible said, be ye angry, but sin not. I said, I'm angry, yes. But if I say something to him now, it would not be right. And God would not be pleased. So I best me to keep my mouth shut. And they said, wow, okay, I, I understand. Man, you're a better man than I am. I said, no, it's not me, it's God. So it's a witness on top of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a great story. And I'm glad that you are available. I know that's a great sacrifice to uh, leave your job and, and just plunge totally into ministry, helping me and the church. So I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if you, you know, you, you ever get down in finances, I got at least 20 I can put on it. Beyond $20, I got to ask my wife but I got 20 automatic <laughs> I can put on your issue. Amen. That's the real you. All right. <laughs> That's the real you. <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, that scenario happens in church where there are repeat offenders. Amen. There are people that just, they go, you know, they're going to be there every Sabbath waiting to rub you the wrong way. And uh, so we have to have this balance here of being nice and being real. Being nice doesn't mean be phony. It just handle things the way that Christ would have us to handle them. And I believe that is correct. Now, Val says in the chat, whomever I come across in the streets, et cetera, if they bring up a worldly issue, I let them know that I am familiar. It ends up in agreement. Amen. Amen. Elder Hood, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just reading the chat. I saw your hand. Come on back. You got to unmute. I, I don't know if, if, I don't know, I'm struggling with this here. So if I'm wrong, please forgive me. Um, but I think about Sister Regina with this here, and I appreciate her mm. so much in that there have been challenges and I, I just appreciate how she handles herself. And for me, it is a, it is a good illustration of a Christian. You know, we're different. We have our challenges. We have our struggles. We have our issues. All of us. That's what the beginning of you are unique cre creations to God. You are the sum total of your successes and your failures. And so you know, I do, I do. And I, and, and, and I know that, um, you know, that's that I, 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 I'm stuttering, I'm stumbling and mm -hmm. I just appreciate her as yeah. well, because everybody don't appreciate what she brings to the table. Mm -hmm. And so being out, you know, with the, with the people that are, are, 
maybe cut from a different cloth when it comes to politics and you know all the stuff that goes along with that but she has a testimony and she's not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ when she's in those arenas and so to to just be able to witness to people knowing who she is as well um yeah I I just thought about her in this regard as well yeah, well, Regina is a good example, uh, and there's some others on here as well, of someone who can reach people that I personally can't reach. She can mm -hmm. identify with folks, and she knows how to approach folks that I yes. can't. And so, uh, so I appreciate you bringing that up. Okay. All right. So we're almost done here. So no need to worry, Sister Veronica. We're almost done. <laughs> be real they want to know that the same divine help is available to him god can use you so be you and, and this is so critical here is people are considering you know do i want to be a part of your church and uh how we act can be the determining factor how we act can be the determining factor, okay? Uh, all right. Okay, some kudos for Regina in the chat there. Remember this today. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. The Ministry of Healing, page 470, paragraph one. Very good quote. We must have the glory sink into us before it can be reflected from us. Now, that's deep. In deep inward beholding, we must have Christ in our hearts that he may shine forth from our lives. Wow. I like that quote. Amen. <laughs> Do this today. Smile and greet every person you can today. Smile and greet every person you can. Sister Regina, go right ahead. Yes, I'd like to say thank you, Sister Hood. Uh, uh, but um, I can be that way because I don't doubt myself. Uh, uh, and I have a different panoramic view of people in general. Um, it, I don't see the people in the other side of the world, I mean, outside being any different from the people in the church, actually. Um, uh, there is no little I's and big U's, including myself. Uh, those, those things that I have to deal with in, in uh, life is my challenges. It, it has nothing to do with anyone else. Uh, it, I'm not that one that blames everybody for uh, whatever valleys or hills I might have to climb or go through. It's me and God's journey. And nobody can ever, after especially knowing and learning what I have, uh, I know that if he be for me, who would be against me? Nobody Amen. can convince me that I'm any less than anyone else. And uh, uh, on both sides of the spectrum, I see that in the politics and, and, and if you have a master's, a PhD, um, we all have to have an expiration date and those those uh, qualifications will not go with you uh, i i look at education you know as a uh, as a thing to do and it's it's a prestigious position but it doesn't define me mm -hmm. and uh, so i look at myself as the same i i don't feel any different when i go up against a person who uh, is shabby dress. I, matter of fact, I'm more close with it. But I thank those of you who are, who have gotten to know me for who I truly am and, and the compliments and everything that I've been given and Sisterhood and, and uh, Pastor Hood for giving me clearance to be heard, you know, and people like me. So when you, you uh, approach someone like me, you won't have reservations that they will get the same respect and adoration and admiration uh, as deserved as I do. So I thank you so much for the opportunity. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you for saying that. Uh, well, you know, this, the rest of this month and next month, the sermons will have a familiar theme. Uh, the only thing stopping the church from exploding, uh, from being greatly successful, is the church itself. You know, and we have to surrender to Christ, you know, and that sounds simple, but it's not when we feel we own the gospel. We don't own it. We have stewardship. God has entrusted us to share his word the way he wants it communicated. Uh, those people in the wilderness with Moses, they was everything and more than what the Bible says they were. However, God told Moses that you got to love them. You got to treat them a certain way. God never told Moses they were going to love him back. He never said it. Go try to find it. Go search it out and tell me if I'm wrong. And so what prevented Moses from going into the promised land? It was the time that he didn't do exactly what God said do when it came to how he communicated to the people of God. So there are some things. This is a request from Pastor Hood because I'm getting ready to close now. Here's my request. Please don't treat new people like they're the enemy. See, we're kind of double-minded in that. We go before the Lord. Lord, send us some, send us some fresh blood. Send us some. So we want to hear the pitter-patter of little kids in the church. And then when they come, them kids get on your last nerve. Oh, we would love new people. We've been, I'm so tired, Lord. I'm tired. You're singing all your spirituals. I'm so tired. I got I want to give up these positions, but ain't nobody else to take them. And then when God sends somebody to relieve you of the position, you don't want to give it up. You see, we have to move from theory to practice. We have to move from sitting around talking about it, as Deacon King Man said earlier, and be about it. And it sounds simple until the Lord may say, Pastor Hood, you've done your job pastoring. Now I just want you to be a regular member. Can I do that? Well, I sure hope so. Because my salvation is not based on whether or not I have a title, as Regina said a moment ago. It's based on whether or not I surrender to God. And so uh, in, in all these churches and ours too, we have the potential for greatness or we have potential to self-destruct. And I don't know why so many churches choose self-destruct. <laughs> you know, I always have this image in my head of Charlton Heston with that rifle saying over my dead cold body, you ain't getting this rifle out of my hand. Well, that's how some of us treat these little positions that are temporary in church, where we sit, you know, will we be able to be on the program? What can we say? Those things are small compared to somebody getting a robe and a crown. And so that's why Psalm 1 is my favorite chapter in the Bible. Because the first thing it says is a righteous man doesn't stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful but he delights in the law of the Lord and he meditates on it day and night. That's not some magical gift that God gave David. That's what's expected out of every Christian. And so, uh, you know, I'm not throwing no stones at any particular person. I'm simply saying that as from my, where I sit, it is so frustrating to be so close to having Azusa Street or Pentecost. But the only reason it doesn't happen is because the people of God can't see the forest for the trees. So let's not let that be us. Let us be who God says we ought to be. Never wanted to be said that I prevented somebody 
from going into God's kingdom. And I know you don't want that to be said about you. All right, our time is up. Blessings upon you. Had such always have a good time talking to all of you. And I pray that this particular lesson, there's a part two uh, to it next week. I won't be here uh, because I'll be doing a revival in Virginia. Uh, but trust and believe uh, one of the leaders will be leading out and this will go on. All our studies, our prayer meeting will go on as it normally does. All right, let's have a word of prayer and then we're going to have some announcements. Father, thank you for pointing some things out to us tonight. Simple things. Be nice. Be kind. Be real. Lord, help us to accomplish that, not for our sake but for your sake. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Any announcements tonight before we go? Reminding everybody to remember in tomorrow morning, seven o'clock, bombarding heaven. Saints, the Lord is just blessing us so. We're hearing so many beautiful testimonies of what God has done. So come out and join us. And we pray together. Pray ye one for another as we cover our pastor, and he's already mentioned the revival. Saints, this is our time. This is our time to stand in unity and bombard heaven. So come and join us tomorrow morning at seven o'clock. Amen. Do that so well. Uh, <laughs> Last day event study group will be meeting. We're back on schedule the second and the fourth Sabbath of each month. Uh, lesson number seven, the mystery of godliness, how Christ came and how God has given his son to us. Come and learn how the love that God the Father has for each and every one of us. We are just studying indescribable love. Come and join us. 2.30 Sabbath afternoon. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Uh, on Friday night, we have our creative arts ministry doing another puppet show uh, at the church. And so uh, I believe Elder, uh, our Sabbath school superintendent, Elder Brooks, said that we are shutting down Sabbath school and everybody is encouraged to support the puppet ministry on this coming Friday night at seven o'clock. Doors open at 630 the uh, program begins at 7 p.m. Okay, any other announcements before we sail on down the line? Excuse me, Pastor, is it going to be streamed? It's not, right? Uh, well, even, uh, I, I, I think she discourages that because then they can't travel. Uh, so that's the issue with streaming it. If, if you put it online, there's no need for people to come see it when they do it in other places. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, all right. So that is it. Remember, this Sabbath's message ain't nothing like the real thing. You got a little bit of taste of it at 645 tonight, and you'll get the whole thing on this coming Sabbath. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Good night, everyone. God Good bless night. you. Good night. Bless night, Good night everyone. everybody.